as the stones and rubble from the last match were moved aside, and many of the combatants returned to their places, there was a rumbling, not from the ground, no, but from the heavens themselves, the change wrought by Pollux's punch, an unrelenting release of power, opening the door for what was to come. Heracles pushed from his terrace, bearing no armor, carrying no weapons. Across his shoulders and about his head the skin of the Nemean lion, at his waist a black belt with a golden buckle, holding the white cartas about his waist. His brown eyes focused on an opponent also exiting a terrace, one that caught his attention to the fullest. I knew you'd be the one I'd have the pleasure of fighting first. Your stories crossed over the seas into every corner of the world I seemed to reach. Tales of a great king who had great accomplishments. Funny how fate seems to work, isn't it? In all of my wisdom and knowing the countries of the world, the Achaeans always caught my eye. And now, here I come, face to face, with someone who represents them to their fullest. I believe you too bear a tale of fortune and misfortune, victory and failure, triumph and glory. The man was of brown skin and actually stood eye to eye with the mighty Heracles. He wore adornments of gold at his biceps and leather at his wrists. He wore greaves that led to sandals and a leather skirt about his waist. His long black hair curled slightly at the edges, graying at the temples. Likewise, his long curly beard too bore streaks of age. I do, yes. I also believe I'm the only one here who has such an armory that even you would be jealous of. Ah, well, the others bear great weapons as well. The only thing of yours I envy is the pelt about your shoulders. Truly a mythical beast that would look great on my own. You're not getting the cloak, I'm afraid. And on to more pressing matters. Care to carry your might of heroes or bow of unshan? Or can we do this with our strength alone? I've brought them to the ring, but I respect your choice to leave yours out of the field of battle. For the time being, perhaps you'll change your mind. I would like this battle to be fair, so prepare yourself. The man among men, perhaps the greatest among them, nodded his head. He looked upward into the wind, and then at Heracles. A breath came and went, and he nodded his head. Ah. <sighs> I'm ready, Heracles. Gilgamesh! Let the comparisons end here! It was instant. The gap between them closing. Two bolts of pure lightning flashing toward one another with intent to meet. Their hands linked together. Fingers intertwining fingers. Neither giving an inch to the other. As they pressed firmly together. A storm burst upward from the meeting of the two. A cyclone that cast dust and debris about the arena obscured the view at the center. So this is your legendary might! Gilgamesh winced slightly, his muscles flexing to meet the strength of his Grecan foe. <laughs> Some of it. Heracles replied, flexing down, attempting to force Gilgamesh to a knee. Ha ha! Is that right? Only some of it! Gilgamesh tore down with his own arms, countering Heracles' efforts and increasing the intensity of the storm about them. What? <laughs> Quit acting so surprised! My stories are now well known. These are the same hands that wrestled the great bull of heaven. Coming at me with any less than your best. Heracles found his knees meeting the ground. A crater spreading as Gilgamesh's strength ripped through him. Is foolish! A swift punch to the face split the storm. Heracles' head snapping to the side. Rubble from the previous matches being flung about carelessly. Across in Heracles' own terrace, Achilles shouted in absolute shock. He... he overpowered Heracles? Pollux seemed... Uh, no way. Dumbfound, Antiomedes was very confused. Skilgamesh, what exactly is he? Let me teach you that more properly. <laughs> ah! Gilgamesh unloaded violently with all manner of punches to the face and clubbing blows across the brow and core. Heracles' massive frame for what it was was flung about like a leaf in the wind, the sheer ferocity of his foe overwhelmingly slamming him about. The barrage continued violently, the ground shaking and the sky which had darkened with clouds beginning to tear with thunder. Each blow 
landing and re-landing, cratering and denting Heracles' frame. The ring buckled and the terraces moved about from the impact. Several combatants scattered after losing their footing in the aftermath of the attack. Gah! Heracles muttered as Gilgamesh grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. The lion skin there stretching as the Grecan warrior failed to reach his feet. You can groan later, I'm not finished yet. Another punch dug into Heracles' stomach and nearly threw his back. Perhaps it was you who should have prepared better, Heracles. Gilgamesh reared back another punch, throwing it toward Heracles' face. His hand found itself trapped in Heracles' own vice grip, the son of Zeus planting his sandals firmly in the aftermath of the attack. Perhaps you're right, but come on. Taunting your opponent when you've not yet even won? You may have wrestled the bull of heaven, but I have diverted the unstoppable Arithmanian boar. You're nothing compared to that! A counterpunch came from the left, socking Gilgamesh in the cheek. His sandals left the ground and he careened across the arena floor. Ha! <laughs> I did get a little big-headed there. But you were- Gah! Gilgamesh was cut off, a stump planting him firmly against the ground. Heracles looming above him with his left sandal digging into his back. You are not fighting back. I had to do something. The Sumerian king pushed up, his hands moving the ground as much as they moved himself. Don't worry. I'll fight back from now on. Heracles removed his foot and spun, his heel digging a circle into the ground before his fist slammed into Gilgamesh's hunched over face. The king was thrown to the air unwittingly with the force of the attack. Starting right now! Rah! Heracles' fist ripped out like cannon fire, the body of his foe being juggled about by the fierce attacks, each punch capable of flattening a lesser warrior a dozen times over. Heracles continued to shout, his fist ripping into Gilgamesh's face and torso. The great hero found his feet shifting about the sands while his eyes grew blurry and weak, the unfettered barrage of the demigod before him releasing a great string of agony through his body. Heracles grabbed Gilgamesh about the waist and flung him up and over his shoulder, the hurled warrior falling to the ring. His feet struck first and he turned from the impact, skipping about the sand and remaining upright. Gilgamesh huffed before smiling, feeling the pressure relieved from Heracles' barrage. His arms hung in front of himself as he looked, eyes meeting his foe yet again. Huh. This reminds me of wrestling Enkidu. You truly have a massive wellspring of strength, Heracles. For what it's worth, I haven't been pushed like this ever. Even against giants and monsters, you are one of a kind. Ha <laughs> ha, wonderful. I have explored the world and know of every country. And I must say, you two are unique. That means nothing, though, because I will still win! Ha! Countless punches hammered out between the two of them, each slam into the other's face and torso, each one a leveling punch that would take out just about any fighter in the arena, each one just another punch they took. Heracles and Gilgamesh continued the barrage between themselves, kicking dust and debris back into the air and shattering the foundations of the Colosseum with sheer vibration alone. Punch after punch, they stood before one another, thunder rumbling in the air above. <laughs> now this is combat! Strength against strength! <laughs> yes, keep indulging yourselves in the art of battle! The mighty Beowulf, having regained his standing position, commented, smiling broadly. They slammed one another in the face, throwing both of them to the wayside and giving a pause for their rather rapid and brutal exchange of attacks. Gilgamesh's face, smooth and flawless, now bore the first signs of damage. A stream of faint crimson comes spilling from his nose and down onto his chest. Heracles, on the other hand, was only breathing heavier, his chest heaving as he turned his head to look at his foe. <sighs> All of that for a drop of blood. Gilgamesh chuckled, flicking some of the blood from his nose. It would appear so, Heracles replied. Then they went back at each other, shooting forward, their hands entwined, a strong blast of air splitting the arena yet again. Once more strength against strength, going at this with more strength now, Heracles! Perhaps. They growled again with both stressing in an attempt to bring their adversary to their knees. Gilgamesh once more felt himself gaining the upper hand, 
his sandals bending at the toe to give him leverage and force to make Heracles bow again. Humbaba was a great giant whom I beheaded. He perhaps was as strong as you, Heracles, but the winds blinded him. What of you? Are these storm winds enough to make you yield? Heracles' buckling knees gained strength, and he shook his head, his sandals crushing into the grounds. That right. The winds did not favor your foe, and you slay him swiftly. I cannot deny that I too have been favored by the gods, but boasting about it seems to take the focus from them and onto oneself. Heracles resisted the strength of Gilgamesh and pushed his own tipping Gilgamesh back somewhat. Though, if you want to talk of giants... Heracles resisted and tipped the weight again, pushing Gilgamesh further into the ground and causing it to split at their feet. I too have had an encounter with one. A fierce giant who was invincible so long as his feet were upon the land of his birth. And I too was given the wisdom of the gods to slay him. And the next one. And the one after that. But I would never dare say that such things would yield you. Excellent, then. Come on, half-god. Show me the full extent of your might, then. Gilgamesh grinned, tipping Heracles back to a defensive position with the trade-off. Tell me of your other exploits now, if you can. With that insult, Gilgamesh bent Heracles down to his knees. Or is even your great strength at its limit now that you're facing someone you're better? It was here Gilgamesh slammed a knee into Heracles' chin, throwing him backwards, the Greek warrior's body striking the ground and skidding to a stop. Heracles shook from the impact and began picking himself up. When, like the wind itself, Gilgamesh came upon him with another punch. Zeus's son felt his head snap to the side, and Gilgamesh grabbed him by the lion's mouth, dragging him up for another punch. And then another, and then another, and then another. And then he spilled into a barrage of blows, each one fiercer than the last. Come now, tell me about catching the lightning fast deer. Or scaring the metallic birds? Or how about slaying your own wife and children? Gilgamesh, oppressive as he was, taunted, continuing his barrage, his advantage and arrogance showing with each and every blow. Heracles was punched into again, and then grabbed and caught up in Gilgamesh's hand. You did good, half-god. Gilgamesh cast Heracles to the ground, his body bouncing off it several times before laying, looking to the sky. This was a great test of my strength, but further proof that even immortality would have proven worthless. There is no struggle for an immortal. It would be more boredom for one as powerful as myself. <sighs> half-god. Why do you keep spouting that word? Heracles questioned, picking himself up, his eyes shaking and bleary, and his face hidden beneath the mouth of his lion hood. You are the son of Zeus, no? Born of a human mother. And even that status and being someone of great strength does not compare to me, for I am two-thirds a god, far greater than your half! Heracles shook his head and looked up. From his wounded nose came not a trail of crimson, but a honey-like liquid, like a droplet of gold. The wisdom of all the countries of the world must have missed a story or two, because indeed, I have many great feats. Killing Garion, visiting Hades, pulling a river asunder, and sacking entire kingdoms on my lonesome. But the greatest of all came when my last earthly wife mistakenly killed me, and I burned on a pyre. Heracles straightened and patted the lion cloak upon his shoulders. My father Zeus granted me the sweet ambrosia of the gods, and my blood spilled and respilled was replaced by the ichor of Olympus. You gave up on your quest for immortality, realizing how no man can do it alone. But I was gifted it from the divine. We are not the same! After that, he blitzed forward, hands clenched and swinging for Gilgamesh's face. What does that mean? You say that like you're a god now. It was here Gilgamesh threw a punch of his own to meet Heracles' face. They combined both tipping to the side before Heracles adjusted and said, No, I am Heracles! And then they began to unload on one another fiercely. 
The clouds overhead booming with thunder as the arena shook and rocked back and forth. Violent punches left both of them, a display of sheer fierceness that was unrivaled. Blow after blow that collided, seeming to shape the arena further. Two beings of strength incomprehensible, trading in a clash of not only personality, but ideology. Did you say Hades? That is the underworld for you. I lost a friend to that same journey. Tell me, how did you escape? Heracles' face was pushed aside by a punch and he snapped his head back quickly. Hades is not a cruel god. Despite that, he does drive a hard bargain. Your friend mustn't have listened to what he was told. Ka! You dare insult him! Once more, Heracles was knocked aside. A heavy blow from Gilgamesh striking his face. The Sumerian king huffed after the attack. Their exchange coming to a close as Heracles stumbled off. Gilgamesh was hunched over, his hands resting on his knees. Thick welts and bruises had formed along his body, and his knuckles shook and bled from their clashing. <sighs> God or not, you are lesser than me. I fear for what becomes of this tournament after I defeat you, or you may just be my fairest match. Heracles shook his head and flicked the golden eye core from his nose. His chest heaved heavily as he straightened up. <sighs> I... I have to share that sentiment, Gilgamesh. This has been a great match, but a fair match. I do not think so. Heracles came shooting forward, right hand drawn back. Even before I died and tasted the ambrosia, Gilgamesh was sent skidding backwards, his head jostled back as blood came from his mouth. I had a labor that even the gods may have found strenuous. I was forced to hold the sky and the moon and the stars upon my own shoulders. The... The entire sky. Gilgamesh was tired and beaten as he huffed that. Yes, it was an effort that pushed my body and mind to their limits. But I did manage to return to my labors. There were things that needed to be done. <sighs> and what was that? Gilgamesh let loose a violent counter. Heracles stumbled afterwards before struggling another punch. I had to atone for my sins. You seemed keen to taunt me with such earlier. Because as a human, there are some things that need to have responsibility taken for. There was another punch. And another. Gilgamesh was punched to the side. His knees buckling, barely able to support him. Despite that, this flurry had yet to take him from his feet. Ugh. Ugh. You said it yourself! You are a god! Stop talking about humanity like that! Gilgamesh spoke, his head waving side to side as his fist was sent wide. While you focus so much on the divinity you possess, you forgot your other third! The circumstances of my birth or my upbringing do not matter! Demigod or fool god, I've always been one thing! I am Heracles, and imperfect as I am, and cruel as I can be, I am the greatest hero! And it was here, Heracles with the mightiest punch struck. His right hand crashed into Gilgamesh's face, and his body trailed with it. The next moment the ground was cratered, and the king was taken from his feet for the second time. And as Heracles stood up, straightening, a smile crossed his face. The ichor from his nose and busted lip dribbling down across his mouth. He knew that he was the victor. Uh, uh, what a match, Gilgamesh. Tired, he stood in the middle of the ring, his eyes looking to the sky above.